Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is gonna go one of two ways. It's either gonna be the coolest little thing or it's gonna be garbage. And I don't know, I think it's like an equal chance of either one of those outcomes. So I don't think it's gonna land in the middle. That's my point. I'm really hoping it's cool. Um, I've been seeing these for the last couple years and uh, always very curious about them. Never had a chance or really never decided to pull the trigger on it. But since I've cultivated a nice relationship with Viver, um, they decided to send one on over to have me check it out. So we'll see. Hmm. So. Huh. What this really is, is like a miniature furnace. Um, so shop heaters, like what I have in here right now, I use two different two different things. I've got a big torpedo heater, which is a direct vent, so it makes your shop smell, but it puts out a ton of BTUs and they're cheap. The other thing, the thing I prefer to use is I've got a heat pump uh, mini split, which I did an installation video on uh, putting that in. So that thing works great if the room's already up to temp, but I don't keep this place heated. This is like 3000 square feet. Uh, so up here in New Hampshire, if you're not using it, it's just a waste of money to keep it heated. So the other neat thing about it is this has a little carabiner on it. That's cool. If you can get it off. It's remote, it's got a remote start. So it's got a little remote control on off in the temperature adjustment. A uh, little digital thermostat built right into it. Obviously you've got a tank for your oil up top here. And then it looks like, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what these are, oh. Oh, so you got like a little adjustable vent. So you can angle the dangle. Um, so that's cool. So this is their larger of their options. This is eight kilowatts. So they measure, you know, BTUs as a measure of heat, kilowatts, same thing. It's all really kind of relative. I don't know what it converts over to. And if I uh, feel fancy, I'll put that down in a little window here that says, this is how many BTUs. Oh, I think they pulled this right out of the uh, Honda Civic parts bin. Is that not the cutest little muffler you've ever seen in your life? Oh, adorable. So on the bottom here, you can see your burn chamber. I'm assuming that's fuel in, and it's very close to this. So I have to assume that that's probably the fresh air intake for the burner. So you can pull that right from the room you're in. You don't need to duck that one out. Uh, and then this must be the exhaust just because it's separate from the fuel, although I don't really love how close that fuel line would come to that exhaust because I'm betting that exhaust gets pretty damn hot. Uh, and then you got a whole output here. Oh, okay. So that's good. So, so far, the only thing I'm not thrilled with is this. This really should have a little 90 on it. Should be kicking down and around this way because no matter how you slice it, that's going to be pretty close to your exhaust pipe. I think I'm gonna set it up over here. And what I'll have to do, I mean, this obviously, is, wow, that was noisy. Obviously this is just temporary, um, but I'm gonna scoot it out the window, uh, vinyl window. So I do have to worry about heat around this exhaust pipe. So I think, and I gotta seal it. So I think I'm just gonna make myself a little panel that drops in there. That way, get a couple inches on either side of this. 31 and a quarter.
Um, but I mean, for now, that's that's not terrible. I've done way worse before. Like it was made for it, because it was. The thing I forgot to talk about, this thing's set up for 12 volts, so we are gonna need a 12 volt adapter, but it's made for camping and, and you can't even see my head. Oh, by the way, new merch, merch store, shake and bake. I don't know if you can see the back real well, but there you go, shake and bake. Has a monster turbo in there on the opposite side. I know you probably can't see it. Trust me, it's there. So there's that. So anyway, we gotta get a 12 volt supply to make a thing go. This is heat. I could not find this freaking thing to save my life. So this pulls about 40 watts of uh, DC at 12 volts. I'm gonna guess it probably pulls a little more at start up and then it'll, it'll probably calm down a bit. So that's not much electrical power at all. Normally you'd put some ring terminals on here so we can attach it to a power supply. But I'm gonna do the right thing and just wedge the wires in there and squeeze them. Start heating. Fuel pump is rolling. I hear rumblings. No shit. She's cooking now. Tell you what, it makes a heck of a lot of different noises when it's firing up, but. Oil pump disconnected. Oil pump disconnected. Oil pump disconnected. So the footage that you've been watching was filmed over a week ago. Um, I ended up having an issue with this unit, which just creates an opportunity to learn more about this stuff, and Viva for that matter. So what was happening is it would fire up, it would run for, depending on the level that you had it going at, maybe five minutes or so, and then would throw a fuel pump error code. So that meant, uh, a, I called Viver to see how they would handle that, and they just, no questions asked, immediately sent a replacement. Now, they didn't have the same unit in stock. They only had a smaller unit. I said, that's fine, send, send that one. So I could tear apart both of them and uh, try to figure out how these things work. Um, so I got the opportunity to do just that. So here's the replacement unit they sent me, and obviously I've taken this thing apart, kind of to see how it ticks, and to try to do a little bit of work on the other one to figure out what was causing the problem. So the first thing I did, was go after the fuel pump. So here's the fuel pump, same exact unit in the larger BTU version, and this is a metered pump. Uh, so it's a diaphragm style pump, and every time that diaphragm clicks, it's sending out a metered amount of fuel, and that's really how it controls that fuel load. And it does that in conjunction with a little temp sensor at the top of the burner here. So obviously this has parameters that it needs to operate within. So if it starts getting too hot in there, it can slow down the, the pulses on the fuel pump and just keep everything right where it needs to be and keep it nice and safe. So that was great. Unfortunately, the fuel pump was not the problem. So uh, after that, we swapped the control display. Uh, thinking that this was doing some of the work here in terms of controlling the fuel pump. And the reality is it really doesn't. This is just a display on off, that type of thing. It's a three wire connection, uh, like a CAN bus style setup. Uh, so this thing's kind of dumb, doesn't do much. The brains of the operation end up sitting right about here. And this thing's pretty cool. So uh, you've got uh, what is essentially a MOSFET driven speed controller for a DC motor right here and that controls the fan speed. And again, that fan speed is based on temperatures, the mode you're running and all of those things. But then it also has a little Hall effect sensor right here that picks up on magnets that are spinning on the fan. So it can literally know exactly how fast that fan is going, which helps for efficiency 
but also as, a, as another layer of safety, if that fan conks out, this thing's gonna know it right away. Um, and we could obviously shut down the burner. Everything important basically plugs into this. This drives the fuel pump. This drives the igniter, which is right here. Uh, this obviously takes the measurement in from the uh, temp sensor there. And here's your connection to the motor for, for power. So these things are actually pretty damn safe. Um, and the, most importantly, they're really easy to fix if something goes wrong. So I just needed to swap out, this is a bad controller, um, and these things you can pick up for like 17 to 20 bucks to replace. Uh, I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, and they're super easy to work on. Everything's on with Molex connectors, so it all comes apart really easy. But I really like the redundancy and the extra safety that I didn't expect in something this cheap. The controller uh, that I swapped from this good new unit, I just put into the larger BTU unit that they initially sent me. And before I signed off on this and said that it's good, this thing has been running nonstop for over a week. And I mean nonstop, like mid fuel ups while it's running, it has not shut off once. It's doing phenomenal on fuel, zero smell in here. Um, it's just like a miniature furnace, remote control works awesome. I can actually control it from the house. So what's the verdict here? Well, listen, at some level you are getting what you're paying for. These are built way down to a price, so I'm sure the crib death ratio is pretty decently high. I don't think I'm like the one in a million that got the bad one out of the box. But with that said, Viver's customer support is awesome. Quick turnaround it was here. The replacement was here in two days. And then if you're out of warranty or whatever the situation is, the parts are everywhere and they're dirt cheap. And it's also really easy to diagnose and fix. But this is like a perfect little solution. If you have like a two car garage or a three, even a three car garage, one of these will actually keep you pretty toasty. Uh, if you have a single car garage, that little one, which I also ran before I tried this one, no problem. Uh, and actually, that'll probably do a two car garage too pretty well. So i um, really impressed with them. Uh, it, portable wise, you know, if you're setting up and want to heat up your tent in the middle of nowhere on a 12 volt battery to power this, run this duct work into your tent, good to go. So I like it. I hope you like it. Any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody, thanks for watching and have a great day.